Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Mara Bernazani. I'm the Communications Coordinator at the UNH Interoperability Lab, and I will be serving as your moderator. Today's webinar is titled Introduction to Broadband Forums Wi-Fi Performance Testing. Today, we will uh, talk about the need for Wi-Fi performance testing, walk through some of the test plan scope, and what is to come in the future. I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Lincoln Lavoy. Lincoln is the Senior Engineer in Broadband Technologies here at the IOL. In his role, he is responsible for the technical management of the broadband access technology grounds, including NFV, Wi-Fi, DSL, GFAST, GPON, and PO. In addition, Lincoln participates in many organizations, including the Broadband Forum and OPNFV. He currently holds leadership and editor roles with the BBF and is contributor, uh, committer, excuse me, committer roles with OPNFV. After his presentation, we will have a Q&A session. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the webinar, and we will address them at the end. We'll also be live tweeting throughout the presentation, and we'd love to hear from you. So please join in the conversation using hashtag Wi-Fi webinar and hashtag UNHIOL. There will also be a recorded version of today's webinar available for your download on our YouTube page and the IOL website. We're really excited to have everyone with us today, so let's get started. Thank you, Mara, for the excellent introduction, and welcome all to our webinar. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get things started. Um, just kind of a quick overview of our agenda for today, covering the, the who, what, why, when, where uh, of the testing. Uh, an introduction through kind of the broadband form test plan, its scope, you know, kind of high level view of the test cases there, and then diving into the implementation of that testing. Uh, we'll follow up the implementation, just kind of running through some of the common mistakes and pitfalls we've seen over the years in working with companies and how they kind of pertain to uh, this sort of testing. And then last but not least, we'll look towards the future of Wi-Fi testing here at the Interoperability Lab and where we see things going from there. So setting the stage, why, why performance testing, why now, why the broadband forum? Um, really, this comes down to Wi-Fi has become the de facto connection for devices in the home and small businesses, really anywhere throughout the entire world. Uh, and what this has led to is, is Wi-Fi leads to a, a kind of a direct performance impactor on the perception of, of customer experience and, and quality of experience, right? And so in our previous webinar sessions that we've done, we've, we've talked a lot about quality of experience and it, it's the perception or the user's perception of the network to deliver the applications or the performance that they expect. Um, and so you can imagine that with a, a poor Wi-Fi connection or poor service connection, that that perception of, of the network uh, could go down um, fairly radically and, and that perception is, is really the thing you're trying to measure or, or improve with the, the quality of experience metrics. And service providers have needed uh, tools in the industry to really help kind of qualify uh, performance aspects of Wi-Fi devices that they would be deploying or, or providing to subscribers or businesses. And, and that's really kind of driven the end goal for the development of uh, this test plan here and what we're talking about today. So the challenge that's faced is really we we have to work with improving the quality of experience or or there's the running the risk of, of losing customers or customer churn or, or having to deal with larger numbers of support calls out in the field and, and whatnot. Um, all that can kind of lead to, to spiraling costs and stuff, which we want to avoid. And one of the, the, the solutions that we've, we've known throughout uh, history of networking is really providing, you know, tried and trusted solutions really can improve a lot of the experiences and kind of avoid uh, any of these issues before things actually get rolled out into the deployments. And so having an environment where we're able to cooperate between manufacturers and service providers and test labs and the development to basically kind of provide an apples to apples comparison mechanism for devices and be able to do repeatable testing, comparison against baselines and, and really find deviations that might be caused through software or hardware changes before stuff gets out into the field can hugely uh, reduce and, and improve uh, the challenge here, which is improving that quality of experience. So diving through to the, the 
test plan scope and what's really focused on the, the, the whole focus of the scope of the test plan is around wireless access point devices or AP devices. Um, really that's because this is typically the equipment that would be provided by a service provider in the home. Um, it's not aimed at necessarily trying to change the Wi-Fi performance or the Wi-Fi experience that would be say given by like an iPhone or something like that because that that's all baked into those end devices compared to the access point device, which tends to be the device more closely tied to broadband deployments. The test plan itself is broken up into uh, a number of kind of high level sections, uh, talking about here in terms of RF capabilities, baseline performance, uh, testing cases that are applicable to how it impacts the coverage of the wireless uh, from the access point, dealing with multiple stations or multiple devices inside the home, uh, and stability and robustness. Uh, one quick note here, I do kind of toggle uh, between station or client talking through the slides, and I apologize for that, but I, in all terms, I'm kind of meaning the, the, the wireless endpoint as compared to the access point device uh, when using those terms. So I try to stay consistent with stations, which would be the, the correct Wi-Fi term, but uh, sometimes I do default to client. So one of the things that makes the, the broadband forum test plan there is, is the inclusion of a, an absolute performance requirement. So I wanted to kind of expand upon what's meant by absolute compared to uh, a relative requirement where you might be looking at uh, the performance metric based on previous measurements on the same device, right? So like maybe we create a baseline and then we actually do a measurement compared to the baseline and the, that metric then drives some type of, of pass fail metric. Uh, in the test plan. And if you compare that against an app, uh, an absolute measurement, absolute measurements are, are something that would be referenced to essentially zero, right? So like in terms of throughput, an absolute measurement would be something like a, a minimum bar of 300 megabits per second or something like that. And, and it doesn't, it removes out um, dependence upon the specific device. Uh, and it also enables comparison uh, between devices. And so this is one aspect that where the, the broadband forms test plan is fairly unique in developing the performance uh, in terms of absolute requirements. And this was something that the service providers gave a lot of uh, input upon because they really wanted to be able to drive um, that apples to apples comparison when they're looking at different devices that they might be considering deploying or even if you're looking at firmware uh, that they might be rolling out into the uh, network as an upgrade or such. So the next several slides, I'm going to kind of run through what are the uh, scope of the test plan and kind of dive into uh, what's inside the test cases, as well as talk about some of the impactors for each of those cases. So inside the RF capabilities, one of the, the key things that's being looked at is, is receiver sensitivity. So it's, it's essentially measuring how well uh, the system under test or the device under test can receive smaller weak signals. Um, this is fairly common in, inside a, uh, a, an RF type test plan. Um, and in terms of the, the wireless or Wi-Fi testing, this is really impacted by the chipset uh, antenna designs as well as any internal noise that might be present in the devices. So um, those are the things that could, could be either discovered or improved upon through the, the application of this testing. Next, there's a number of baseline cases that are included. So these are essentially kind of some baseline performance under more ideal conditions. Um, first is, is really the maximum throughput test. So looking at the, what the DUT or the AP is capable for a maximum throughput uh, under the ideal conditions. Uh, again, you, you kind of are gonna see some pretty common trends throughout all of these test cases where the, the chipset for the Wi-Fi chipset and the antenna design uh, are, are impacting a lot of the test cases here, but then you're also going to see that you're going to start to bring into things like system software and CPU that's built into the device as well as the other kind of impactors and stuff like this. Next, we, we're looking at like the maximum number of devices that could be connected. So looking to make sure that the, the AP supports a minimum number of connected stations. Um, really, this is important when you're, you're in a broadband deployment, you're probably supporting any number of devices that might be present in the, the connected home or the connected business uh, and making sure that you're going to meet those minimums. So the test plan includes the minimum bars on, on that performance level from there. And again, it's, you know, chipset, system software, CPU utilization, et cetera. 
Airtime fairness is, is looking to verify that the, the AP fairly allocates the quote unquote airtime that when multiple stations are actively passing traffic. Um, this is important because uh, it's heavily dependent upon things like generation of chipsets and stuff that are out there in the client side where you don't necessarily have the ability to, to forklift upgrade all the wireless devices in, in a deployment all at once. And so airtime fairness uh, ensures that the AP isn't, isn't talking specifically to one station or, or allowing one station to monopolize uh, the airtime or the bandwidth uh, capacity that the AP has inside that device, inside that deployment. Again, chipsets, system software, CPU, all kind of play a factor into uh, those testing in that role. Moving on to coverage testing inside the home. So this is, is looking at like the range versus rate. This is a pretty common test that I think most people would be uh, very familiar with uh, throughout the uh, test plan. Uh, essentially, you're looking at the average throughput uh, supported at different ranges. Um, and range would be implying the distance between the station and the AP. Uh, that's typically implemented in the lab uh, through the attenuation or the, the signal loss between those two devices. Uh, impactors, again, chipset and antenna design, si system software, CPU, etc. Also impacting on the, the coverage would be the spatial consistency. So this is looking at how the orientation of the AP or the device under test impacts the throughput uh, performance of the system. So if you can imagine, um, in the ideal case, you probably want fairly uniform performance uh, throughout that 3D space um, because the AP could be placed anywhere inside the, the subscriber's premise. Um, that, uh, is done throughout the lab looking at like a rotation, um, typically uh, different orientations of the AP uh, under test. Next, we drive into handling of multiple stations. So this is verifying AP performance when you're starting to deal with multiple clients. And so multiple station performance ensures throughput between the station and the AP aren't impacted when other stations are associated to the network. Um, whether or not those stations are doing things like coming and going. Um, so there are specific test cases that looked at that as a, a non-impactor on the throughput while other stations are coming and joining the network. Obviously, you don't want the wireless connection that you're utilizing to fall apart uh, when somebody walks into range with something like a, a smartphone device and it joins the network. You wouldn't want that to, to negatively impact the football or soccer game. Uh, that might be uh, on the TV screen using a wireless connection uh, for that. So looking at things like that, you're also looking at the performance when you actually are, are talking to multiple stations at the same time, um, which is the, the multiple station performance in that, that top one. And then also the test plan does address some of the, the, the newest, more common uh, systems that are out there. So things like 802.11ac uh, brought in the, the ability to do uh, multi-user MIMO, uh, also known as Wave 2 uh, to some folks. So that's in the downlink so direction, so from the AP to the station. This essentially uh, enables the AP to kind of quote unquote talk to multiple stations at the same time. and so. There's test cases that are specifically defined to uh, verify that that is actually able to support that and you can actually see kind of the full utilization of that, that multiple downlink uh, channel. Um, and that increases the, the downstream performance to devices that are also supporting that as the client side of things. Uh, again, impactors you see chipset, antenna design, system software, as well as CPU utilization. Next, we drive into stability and robustness. So this is obviously a, a big one for service providers. And you can imagine this is also a big one that is an impactor on that quality of experience metric that we're talking about, which is kind of the end goal to all this testing, is trying to improve that quality of experience. Long-term stability um, really looks at verifying the link is stable over a long period of time. The test, as it is defined today in the test plan, is 24 hours in length. So it's really looking that that AP and that connection is stable. Um, throughout that entire period. 
uh, impactors, obviously, like things like the chipset and the system software uh, for that stability and that robustness. And then you have things like AP coexistence. So this is where you can imagine the apartment building or, or where you've got neighbors that are close enough that you can actually see the multiple Wi-Fi networks in the same space. Uh, so if you pull out your, your trusty smartphone in any one of these conditions and you're looking at what networks does your phone see, that's exactly what this test case is looking at. And there's also multiple categories that kind of could be applied to this where those other networks may be uh, utilizing channels or, or frequencies that are directly overlapping uh, with the, the network that you're using in your deployment, or they may be completely not over, non overlapping or they may be partially overlapping. And so in those three cases, um, the performance will vary and, and there's different levels of impactor uh, on that. And so the, the test plan really tries to take that into account and verify that um, you're not actually seeing uh, huge degradation or huge impact uh, beyond what would be expected from those, those networks contending for the same quote unquote airspace. So that, that's kind of the 10,000 or, or 20,000 foot view of the test plan uh, as it exists today in draft form from the broadband forum. What we were wanting to drive through next was actually talking through the uh, implementation of the testing and what's there. So uh, looking at kind of the, the very generalized view, you obviously start with the wireless access point, the device under test. The testing needs a station that uh, talks to that device under test. That station could be a real device or it could be an emulated device. The testing depends on some type of a tunable or a controllable uh, RF path between those devices. You need a clean RF environment to execute the testing. So the test plan actually does call out what is meant by a clean environment or clean air uh, in terms of the, the maximum signal strength that you should be seeing um, from any device. So that's something that's important in terms of considering lab implementation or implementation of the testing. And then last but not least, you need uh, a packet generator, which is actually the, the system that's capable of making those throughput type measurements uh, between the device uh, under test, AP, and the station stations, depending on the test case. So getting a little bit more specific about how we're implementing that here in our lab. So we're actually using a, a multiple isolation chamber setup. So the picture there on the right, uh, looking through what we've got, we have uh, three different small isolation chambers. Uh, inside each one of those chambers uh, is essentially a set of near field antennas for the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz spectrums uh, and the also in the large chamber at the the base there we also include a, a turntable for doing that orientation or that spatial consistency testing that we talked about earlier um, this basically gives us the ability to have a controlled uh, rf path between each of the devices uh, and that's made up of the multi-path emulator uh, which is specifically designed to emulate that RF fading path that would be important for technologies like 802.11n and 802.11ac uh, and those MIMO technologies. Uh, as well as a set of tunable controllable attenuators, right? And so you have the ability to basically change the quote unquote perceived RF distance uh, or attenuation between each of those chambers. Um, the, the multi-path emulator in this case actually does include a, the attenuator built in directly to that system. So there's actually a combination of three attenuators there that if you look between each of the chambers, you can see that those attenuators allow you to essentially control the RF path between each of the chambers. And then we also include uh, the partner devices, which is essentially the ability to emulate stations or access points. So in terms of the uh, broadband forum test plan, we're able to actually emulate the stations, which gives us some consistent results. And then we have a noise source. So we have the ability to emulate the other uh, impinging RF networks uh, or other RF noise sources, things like Microsoft, or sorry, uh, microwave ovens, or um, you could have other technologies like Bluetooth or, or such that are actually impinging on the same spectrum space uh, as different 
uh, technologies that might be out there. So talking through this, our RF path is emulated um, with a multi-path fading channel. Uh, this is really attending to drive our repeatability and what we're allowing for automation of that testing. Um, it's kind of a, a key to the, the test setup that we have here. And then we're also, like I said, we're emulating the stations uh, based on types of measurement equipment, uh, all supporting the latest 802.11 standards. Uh, that gives us the ability to kind of abstract out uh, any station performance from the testing when we're looking at comparing different devices that came through it. It's always using the same kind of station uh, in a very fixed environment, uh, fixed set of uh, antennas and, and coupling into the system so that we can uh, have very consistent performance there. It also is more controllable, allows for automation, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, we're doing our traffic generation based on both a combination of iPerf, which is an open source software package that allows you to actually generate and measure throughput on TCP and UDP uh, paths or packets through the network. And then we're also supporting uh, dedicated test and measurement or traditional test and measurement equipment that would be kind of that packet generator system. Um, this is one area that's not necessarily fully specified in the draft test plan at this point, um, but there are ways where you can actually see the test plan or the outcome of the testing impacted by uh, that packet uh, source and system. So we're, we're working to kind of formalize and finalize that in the test plan down to, to one specific uh, measurement technique, uh, and that'll be coming up in the upcoming work. So if we look at some kind of just a very high level initial results out of the testing without giving too, too much away here, um, this is a set of measurement data for real device under test, uh, looking at kind of a comparison of 802.11 AC compared to 802.11 N performance um, between uh, the station and the AP as a result of, or as a function of the attenuation or range away from uh, the system. This is obviously for single orientation, so there's no rota rotational aspect or directional aspect to this. Um, we just kind of grabbed one quick run off of the system to show uh, real throughput measurements that would be made uh, through a system. Talking about some of the common mistakes that we've seen, um, we've worked with a, a number of companies comparing results, comparing testing methodologies, and, and wanted to kind of hit on some things that we've seen uh, impinge upon results or sometimes be tricky when implementing this type of testing. Uh, number one is obviously the noisy environment or the, the RF environment. Uh, avoid any open air testing. Um, there's, there's a lot of times where it's, it's you, you know, interesting to get a quick and dirty test of, oh, just set up the AP, set up the station, you know, put them a meter apart, et cetera, and, and try that testing. But it's, it's almost impossible to get consistent results in, in doing a setup like that, um, where, you know, you're, you're not necessarily carefully controlling the orientation between the devices, that, that RF path, it's almost impossible to control the multi-path aspects of it. You know, even somebody walking through the space uh, impacts those type of results. Also, um, this is one that a lot of people don't think of, but uh, with respect to the RF connectors there, like the signal paths that you're seeing here, actually proper tightness does matter. You need to do things you know, with torque wrenches, et cetera, to make sure that you're handling those cable paths correctly. So even if you are using something like a chambered environment, that setup can also uh, greatly impact the results if you're not uh, handling all of those connectors appropriately, et cetera. Speaking of that path, having it uh, be a calibrated RF path, something that's controlled is really important. Um, but the implementation of that is also important as well, right? So if you have a, a, a purely fat path attenuator uh, and you're doing a, a, a conducted or a cabled path only, so you've removed all the attenu uh, antennas out of the uh, situation, um, that flat directly cabled path net, not, isn't necessarily realistic to a real world environment in any way, shape, or form. So then it becomes very hard to kind of draw any parallels between those type of results uh, and actual RF performance uh, in a deployment. So, you know, while having a, a controlled attenuator is good, the application of that controlled attenuator is something you have to be careful of. Uh, traffic measurement techniques. So I kind of alluded to this uh, earlier of, in terms of how you've configured your traffic setup uh, can actually impact those results. Uh, and this is where one of the things that we're driving towards with the final test plan is to provide some very detailed requirements on those traffic requirements. Um, 
or potentially even uh, iperf commands or recipes that could be used directly for that testing. And then last but not least, uh, dealing with kind of the spatial streams and making sure you understand the um, aspects of what the AP supports, what the station supports, that the uh, RF path uh, properly supports that number of spatial streams so you can actually take that into account. Uh, this is things like number of channels, number of near field antennas, uh, attenuator paths, et cetera. So all of those things really do actually impact uh, that performance of that RF performance between those two devices. And so again, just kind of making sure you're sizing up and shaping that testing appropriately for what you actually have supported in the equipment under the test. So I wanted to talk through the timelines just for a little bit. So this is a question that we get asked pretty frequently in terms of when's this coming, where can I get it, et cetera. So uh, this is a kind of the tentative time plan, picking up where we are uh, as of May, uh, looking through the test plan development, hopefully getting this out to a ballot period starting uh, after the broadband forum meeting that's upcoming in June uh, with the actual outcome of uh, UNH IOL pre-testing uh, sometime early in July. So basically just after the US holidays there that are in the beginning of July uh, is when we're looking to launch our first pre-testing uh, to members of the UNH IOL. Uh, and then as the test plan becomes formally resolved and agreed by the forum, that's where we would actually turn on the uh, formal testing. And one of the things that I wanted to kind of highlight in this was that the test plan really kind of reaches that steady state, um, small amounts of changes, no tech large technical changes during that comment resolution period uh, inside the uh, forums process. So talking about getting tested, uh, we're using our fully automated uh, testing system that is here available in the lab. All that testing is performed in our facility in Durham, New Hampshire. Uh, companies are welcome to send engineers on site to attend. Uh, there is not a mandatory uh, requirement, but welcome to join us. All that testing is performed by UNH Iowa technicians that have been formally trained on the equipment and the testing uh, and are intimately familiar with technologies. Most importantly is all those results are directly owned by the companies that are working on that testing. They're not published by the UNH IOL. We don't send them off to third parties without anybody's authorization or explicit permission. Uh, and this is important about you know, how companies are working and engaging with us both either as service providers or the, the sending equipment in for testing. Looking towards the future, uh, we're looking at the multi-AP performance. So this is primarily the client steering aspects. So this is uh, essentially having multiple APs within uh, a deployment and actually controlling the station uh, and roaming between those AP devices. Uh, this is something I would expect that the broadband forum test plans will evolve towards supporting as the, uh, the multi-AP pro protocol or that MAP uh, protocol comes out of the Wi-Fi Alliance to kind of define that control of the client steering aspects. So if we, very much expecting that the, the second versions of the test plans will actually be updated to support that. Um, in this case, really the AP uplink uh, between those different APs is either wired or wireless. Uh, it's kind of outside of the scope of that. It's more about the client steering performance of that roaming performance. Which leads us to the next thing of when you talk, start talking about the mesh or the hybrid networks, that's really where you have only wireless links between the other AP devices. Uh, and now you're actually looking at the performance through that mesh network or through that mesh uplink. And so that's something that would probably also find its way into uh, that second generation of testing, uh, which will probably be getting started on the development of during the fall. And then we have the, uh, a strong interest in looking into actual more formalized quality of experience testing. So starting to take a look at looking at the higher layer applications and, and measuring the quality of those applications running on top of the wireless networks and seeing if we can actually directly deprive uh, a wireless uh, impactor on that quality of experience for the application. So this is something that uh, we're currently doing a lot of active research into here in the lab and we're expecting to actually drive um, some testing out probably during uh, the later half of, of 2018. So we've talked about where we are in the heading, where we are today, uh, as well as the, the tools and the technology and the testing that we have. And so at this point, I wanted to open it up for any questions and answers that may have come in from the group. And 
So I'll turn it back over to Mara to act as our moderator. Thanks, Lincoln. Uh, great presentation. We covered a lot of exciting information. Uh, we're uh, going to start uh, answering a couple questions that came in. Um, feel free to also submit your questions as we go through these. Uh, if we don't have time to answer a question, we will follow up with you after. So we have a question here um, on how is this different from the Wi-Fi Alliance testing? So that's a great, great question. Um, so Wi-Fi Alliance testing, so they've been uh, running testing for uh, a number of years. They have some certification uh, programs that have been standing. Uh, one of the, the key differences that the Wi-Fi Alliance testing is, is focused obviously on all wireless devices. So they're, they're dealing with both the, the client station side as well as the AP side. Uh, and also their, their testing tends to be a little bit more on the functional aspect, uh, as well as kind of having some very minimal touches on performance. This testing has been aimed a lot more at actual performance testing, uh, kind of allowing uh, for service providers to be aiming towards choosing best of breed type devices. Um, and so it's in, again, if you think about where the, the testing actually came from or the, the development of the testing came from, uh, with the broadband forum and the strong input from those service providers, that's where uh, that drive is really coming from. We have a question here from Marina. How do you relate the results you get to a real life environment? Um, and so the, the real life environment relations come into understanding how those uh, paths and the attenuation relates to a real world environment, um, primarily. Uh, the there are equations that can actually kind of translate the uh, attenuated signal, so the dB values uh, relative to a free path loss. Um, so, you know, Wi-Fi signal traveling through air um, in that, that way. And then also that multi-path emulator that's used in the testing is actually based on the models defined in the 802.11 standards from the IEEE. Um, and those models were based uh, largely around kind of a, a measurements made in a small business or a small home office uh, residential type environment for that type kind of multi-path that you would see there. And so having that, that multi-path is kind of based on the, the real world environment that's specified in that model. We have a question here from Samuel. Is the maximum amount of stations include different types of stations or capabilities? So the maximum number of stations, I believe, is currently defined as all the stations are the same uh, generation of Wi-Fi. So that's just kind of making sure you can account for having 20 or 30 stations connected at the same time. The airtime fairness test is where you actually start to look at, and the, the multi-station performance test is where we actually start to vary those stations having uh, different technology or connectivity there. So things like an older 802.11a or G can a station at the same time that you have a, a more modern 802.11n or 802.11ac station. Um, and that's really because that creates the more interesting case where you're actually dealing with airtime fairness and who's talking faster or taking up more time to transmit the same amount of bandwidth. Um, and that's where you can really see those, those quality impactors uh, there. We had some great comments from Marco. Um, one of his questions is, is this meant to be implemented as a piece of software in gateways or in the extenders and monitored from a cloud platform? How could this work? So this testing is, is intended not necessarily to be implemented in the, the station or the, the gateway directly. Um, there are other specifications out there looking at kind of monitoring network performance. Uh, IETF has LAMP um, and that stuff. I believe that the document is uh, the 304 within the broadband forum. Um, but kind of pulling that out of uh, long-term memory, but there are, there are some uh, technologies and standards out there aiming directly at that where you would actually implement it in the gateway uh, and then use technologies like TR69 or the new USP uh, technology to actually then monitor that network performance. This testing is actually more designed as in-lab testing and, and kind of qualification testing that would be used by service providers uh, or equipment vendors during the, the development process for either a new piece of hardware or new firmware uh, before that hardware or firmware is actually pushed out into the field. 
We have a question here from Matt. How long would a full run through all tests take approximately? Uh, so right now, given the automated testing, uh, we're looking at um, probably about a week to get through the full testing, so about 40 hours. Um, that includes some setup and debugging time as well. Um, but we're really kind of trying to aim for that being our internal goal with our development processes here in the lab. A follow-up question from Matt as well. Are there any plans to test band steering, radio to radio on the same AP, or client steering or mesh testing? Uh, there are plans aiming at that. We're looking at the, the multi-AP and client steering aspects, uh, as well as like I talked about with the mesh, would probably aim towards the, the second version of the test plan. Um, generally, the, the way we've done development within the broadband forum as kind of uh, issues of test plans, uh, where the, the first generation, you know, and the second generation would then build upon that. Uh, when we started this process, the, the multi-AP protocol was just kind of really getting started. It wasn't necessarily uh, standardized at that point. Um, and we're kind of expecting that that's still largely the case in terms of actual implementations. I know that 1.0 has just come out. There's a 1.1 version of the protocol in the works. Um, and so we're, we're probably aiming for that development process to kick off uh, in late summer or the fall of this year uh, as part of the, the second version of the test plan. Uh, and then that is, would follow the same development process of, of going through development and comment and then getting folded into available testing. How uh, is AP coexistent testing performed and how is it analyzed to match with real-time deployment? Sure, um, so the way we're implementing the AP coexistence testing, so this is where you would, it really it's, it's kind of coexistence of two networks existing at the same time. Uh, as I said, there's really kind of three scenarios in that case. There's 100% uh, overlap of the channel, uh, partial overlap of, of the channels or no overlap of the channel. So each of those cases is something that we're, we're looking into. Um, we uh, have the ability that the quote unquote noise generation system that's built into our test setup in the lab can generate uh, you know, superfluous noise, so something coming from like a microwave oven, or it can actually emulate uh, signals being generated directly from other uh, quote unquote wireless networks. And so you can set any channel that you want there, you can set any level of network utilization, uh, and then that system is actually able to, to direct signals that would be detected into the, the device under test as basically a contending or a coexisting network. And so that's how we're um, aligning that. And in terms of aligning with the real world, that's coming back to kind of those three scenarios coupled with that uh, utilization that you set for that kind of emulated uh, coexisting network. We do have a general industry question. Are the service providers participating in this work inside the BBF? Uh, absolutely. So as I kind of indicated, they were kicking off um, or primarily involved in kicking this process off uh, and giving a lot of uh, input. They've also been big proponents of driving towards the uh, absolute performance requirements. So they, they really are keen on kind of driving that apples to apples comparison. And then they've also been uh, fairly vocal through each of the, the meeting cycles in terms of providing feedback to contributions and, and kind of what they think about the test cases as this development process. And I think currently we've got, you know, three or four very actively involved service providers actually are involved in the contributing. Uh, and then we have a number of service providers that are just, you know, watching and following, but not necessarily directly contributing to it. But, you know, that's about average, I would say, for what we see for participation inside the forum and such. I have another follow-up question. So it looks like this test plan is mostly oriented towards access points. Correct. And, and again, this coming from um, an interest in, in the broadband industry, uh, we, don't, we don't have the delusions that we would be able to necessarily control all the wireless clients that are out there in the, either small homes or, or small businesses, homes, residential, broadband deployments, right? The, those wireless clients are gonna be everything from smartphones, tablets, laptops, uh, media devices, you know, the Chromecast, the Fire Sticks, all of that stuff uh, that you would expect to see inside uh, a wireless network, either home or small business or, or even large business. 
And, and so that the thing that we have the sphere of influence over is, is really involved in the, the wireless access points uh, that are either provided as part of uh, a broadband deployment or pointed to by service providers for their subscribers to uh, purchase or get access to. And so that's really looking towards a sphere of influence that uh, comes from uh, this environment or, or this reality. And so then that's where we focused a lot of our testing development on where the, the station is something that's kind of outside of our direct control. Well, that just about concludes our questions for today's presentation. Thank you again, Lincoln. Uh, great job explaining all this information. Um, thank you again, everyone, for attending today's webinar on the Broadband Forum's Wi-Fi performance testing. We appreciate your time, and if you have any further questions or we didn't uh, get a chance to answer you today, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can contact Lincoln at lylavoy at iol.unh.edu. And just a reminder again that there will be a recorded version of today's webinar available on our YouTube page as well as the UNH IOL website, which is www.iol.unh.edu. Again, on behalf of the UNH IOL, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.